All right, so here we are again, uh, talking non-emergency medical transportation, how to start your non-emergency emergency medical transportation service. Um, I want to touch on eligibility and who's allowed to own and manage and run a medical transportation company and who's not. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm just looking at and catching up on some of the videos uh, here on YouTube that people are putting out. And, uh, you know, guys, just just be conscious of the people that you're watching and who you're talking to. Um, I just saw a short and uh, the guy said that you cannot if you if you want to start a non-emergency medical transportation company, you cannot be a felon. Uh, that's not true. Now, can you provide Medicaid transportation services and be a felon? Um, that's debatable. You actually can, but there's a couple of extra steps that you have to take. Um, you can have a criminal background. It definitely has to be nonviolent, but you can run, manage, and own a non-emergency medical transportation company with a background. Uh, what a lot of places are going to do is initially they'll deny you. What you have to do is you have to appeal it. So when you're uh, uh, applying for your Medicaid number or to become a provider, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and put on your application when they ask you, you know, do you have a background? Just be straight up and tell them, look, I have a background. Um, this is what happened. I give a lengthy explanation. The longer, the better. The longer or the more information you give them, the more wiggle room you actually have when you go in front of an appeals court to say, hey, you know, this was a one time, one off situation and never happened again. It shouldn't uh, prevent me from providing services. One and two, the second thing that you want to remember is people, people love a comeback story. People enjoy and like giving individuals a second chance if they've had a proper opportunity to vet them, take a step back and see what they're doing. Now, if you're, you know, fresh out of jail, you know, and you, you, you know, you five minutes, uh, you know, walking around, you, you know, you just started probation or something like that, it, it, it will likely be a little more difficult, but um, you still can become a provider. So first of all, I just want to make this clear. Non-emergency medical transportation is for anybody. Uh, anyone can provide the service. Um, and, and, and if you if you have a heart to serve and provide services to people, you most definitely can. Now, a little bit over two minutes in, so we're going to get into the meat of the story. If you're rocking with me, you already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> you don't need to be providing no transportation services anyway. So... Why would anyone care or even ask if you're a felon? If you're not actually in the vehicle providing the transportation services because you have your company set up properly, there's no real concern. What you want to remember, what you want to keep in mind is that on this particular channel, we focus on building businesses, not building jobs. We want to create income without leaving our home. So if you're not the directly the person providing the service, it really shouldn't matter. So now the step is when you're finding employees, you have to ask yourself is you're the one vetting this individual. You're the one looking over their resume, doing the background check and making a decision whether you're going to hire them or not. Uh, and when it, it's that layer of protection and you're properly insured, and you're, you're properly set up. You can hire anybody you want. You can give anyone a second, third, fourth chance that you want. I remember one of the guys, and this was, I think, in 2014, 2015, maybe earlier than that. His name was Alvin. Alvin had did 20 years in prison, a bank robbery uh, that went wrong. Um, he needed a job. Alvin said, I'll work for you. You'll never have a problem with me, um, but I need to you know, find a job so I can get back on my feet. And Alvin even told me, he said, I'll probably only work for you for about six months because I have some other stuff that I'm doing. I'm going, taking uh, a night trade class uh, in plumbing. So, you know, I just need something to hold me over till I get to that point. And, uh, you know, it, it worked out like that. I think Alvin worked for me for five months. Once he obtained his uh, plumbing or electrical certification, he moved on. But I told Alvin from jump, I said, I'm going to give you a shot. I'm gonna watch every move you make, but I'm gonna definitely give you a shot. And he did a great job. He always checked in, was always on time. 
did what he's supposed to do. Um, so that's not that's not true. It's it's all about how you set things up. Now, like I want to go back to and point out how you set your business up is how people are going to view you and look at you. Here's another option. You can always put someone else on your information, allow them to run the business on paper, and then you run and manage the business uh, on the ground. You know, your wife, your girlfriend, if you trust individuals like that. You can always put it in your mama name or your daddy name or your daughter's name or your son's name or your niece or your nephew. Anybody that you have a good relationship that trusts you and you trust them, uh, you can always do that. So for the guys out here that may be, you know, watching some of these videos, again, I encourage you and encourage the people that you talk to and work with. Remind them, look, one, you need there's a lot of information on YouTube. Some of it is good and, and, and some of it is better. My information is better. Uh, but it just bothered me when I saw that. Um, you should always be focusing when you're starting a business. How do I keep myself from actually having to be in the muck, in the mud, providing a service and on really on the back end, building relationships, closing deals and finding opportunities to grow? Uh, so you really have no business providing services in the first place. And furthermore, I mean, we have a president right now who, uh, yeah, you know, well, he's about to become the president or a strong shot at being a president. Thirty four felonies. So, of course, you can, you know, do anything you want. If we can let a felon potentially become the president of the United States, why would they stop you? The catch is you have to be ready to take that extra step. And a big part of running a business is understanding you're going to have highs and lows. You're going to have good and bad. You're going to have ups and downs. That really shouldn't matter. The ups and downs shouldn't matter. You really you should already know you got to solve a problem. Remember, you're a solutions oriented business. You're not a transportation provider. I don't even when I was providing transportation with my company, I was always putting out fires. And it clicked one day and I was like, wow, this is exactly right. I'm I'm here solving problems. So I'm just I'm a solution. You want to keep in mind that you're a solution. Once you realize that you're really just here to solve a problem, it makes it really easy to be a, a transportation company because really you're just coordinating services. You're connecting one person to a vehicle to a destination. So it's really nothing more or it's really no different than the airline company. The owner of the airline, United Airlines doesn't actually fly planes. Never has, never will. You know, short of riding on his jet, he probably has never seen the inside of a cockpit. He may not even know what his airplanes look like if you pointed them, if you took the signage off of it and pointed it out to him. Why? That's not his job. His job is to connect people to destinations in the most efficient profit earning way he can for his company he's responsible for his shareholders not the person sitting on the flight he's responsible to make sure that the planes are properly staffed so his his mindset is different his viewpoint is different his idea is different and you have to start looking at things very similar your ideal on what you're actually here to do, what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it has to improve. It has to enhance. And when you're providing services, that's what it should be doing. It should be taking that next step and saying, hmm, how do I take myself out of this situation and strictly build my business without me being in the vehicle? And as I constantly tell you guys, the best way to do that, build your digital footprint. Make sure that people can find you online. Make sure that you're going to meetings. You're registered with the Chamber of Commerce. You're registered with any hospitals or rehab facilities out there. So when they're looking for providers, you pop up on their list as someone that can help them solve their problem. Their problem is transportation. Making sure those individuals go from the emergency room to a vehicle to their rehab center or back home. That is your job. That is your glorious journey. That is the expectation that you have. And when you see 
the power that that has for you in your life, it changes you, it improves you. And not only that, it also opens your eyes to all opportunities. I can provide services in any state that I choose to. All I need to know is, okay, these are the regulations in this state. Google my business page, something that we can help you with. Facebook ads, Facebook advertisement, maybe some TikTok. If I feel like it, that's really not the platform that I like or prefer or that works uh, for this industry. But Facebook and Google are money makers. And now I'm just getting information out to the proper people that need to see it, drawing them to my funnel, which is my website and my Google business profile and allowing them to make the decision to say, hey, I want to take action and use this company. And then moving forward with contract, taking payment and going forward. Running a medical transportation company is easy, it's simple. I've done all the dumb stuff so you don't have to. So you're more than welcome to reach out to me, have a conversation. I want to help you grow your business the right way, not the hard way.